Hey everyone, Slothcakes here, and welcome back to some more MBON. Now today we're going to be using the Crossborn Gundam X2. This is a 2000 cost mobile suit. I did a video of this guy in full boost. You can click the title card or the link down in the description to check it out. I highly recommend it because I explain what this guy can do a lot more than I'm going to do in this video. You know, I don't want to split uh, spend every video talking about this what each mobile suit does just because that's going to take forever and that's going to take a majority of this video but anyways i did also one of the x1 which is from the same series and what this mobile suit's based off hence the x2 now they share very little uh alike besides the main gun and both having the abc mantle the X1 was a lot more up in your face, has good melee, good approach tools, while the X2 has ranged weapons, a lot of things to keep at a distance, and is a good support unit. Now this guy has a decent main gun, similar to the X1. The CSA is a good spam weapon. It can be your entire neutral if you really want it to be. He shoots his lance. It's a fast charge actually. It hits, it stuns him for a good amount of time, and you can do quite some bit after. His second is his uh, melee weapon toss. He throws his beam saber and beam... I don't know if it's a beam cutlass or beam scimitar. But anyways, if the beam saber hits, it uh, staggers him for a good amount of time. Then if the beam cutlass hits, it launches him up in the air. You can do a lot of things from it if it's not your combo ender. You can Jirobi, you can melee if you're close enough, you can get your main gun, or you can uh, burst special, it's really up to you. But, a thing that's really nice is it keeps your momentum. If you can go left or right or up with it, if your boosting's not gonna kill your movement. Also, you don't need to commit both the weapon tosses. You can throw the first weapon and immediately sidestep or boost out of it, which is nice. So you don't have to commit to that full arc. Now he has a Jirobi, it has some good tracking, it's small, does alright damage, recharges pretty quick, overall pretty alright weapon. Then obviously he has his ABC mantle, really good tool, great for utility, can do a lot of things, you just have to be smart and use it properly. You can take it off, if you take it off you get a speed boost, if you have it on you become a little floaty, it's called Fua Stepping. And the best way to explain it is you just, instead of falling downwards just normally, you float downwards. Or if you boost upwards while you're falling down, you kind of go in this like... Fuwa means like a cloud. And the best way, like I'm trying to find the best words to do it in English. It's just that you float about casually when you go up and down. It's the best to show you guys later on, but when you guys get visuals, it makes a lot more sense. Sorry I don't have that. Once the game comes out and I have full access to it, I'll show you guys all this stuff. But anyway, so you're gonna see me melee. His melee isn't terrible. It's just a little slow. You know, you expect this from a 2000 cost range suit. But right here is a special. It's very easy to combo into it. I combo it off a main gun shot. He's gonna throw his lance. He's gonna uh, fire Jirobi, then he's gonna spawn these three mobile suits. I don't know the name of them, it's been a while since I've had Crossbone. But they're gonna Kamikaze towards the enemy, and that's the entire special. If you miss the Lance Toss and he shoots the Jirobi, the guys that spawn can still Kamikaze at the guy even though he's away. Which is nice, it's a little insurance. It's pretty easy to land. Like combo wise, but going off and getting the full animation, it is kind of slow. Also, you're completely stationary while it's going off. But if you have the ABC mantle on, you can try to eat a few shots and try to get the entire thing off just because you can eat a few beam shots, which is always nice and a good thing about the ABC mantle. Or things like that, which makes the full cloth, the X1, and the x2 spear special a little better because you do have insurance but anyways that's about everything he does have a bat like a combo extender as in back melee and while you're comboing someone hit back melee and you're gonna start stabbing them repeatedly ending in like a double slash or something like that it just tacks on some more damage you're stationary while you're doing it so it's not the best thing to do but if you have the time and you're safe why not tack on that damage? 
But yeah, I'm just gonna keep comfy. I'm gonna keep at a distance and shoot. I do a lot of supporting. It's a problem. I don't know. I always feel like I just get shafted into that role. Or just the mobile suits I play are just good support units. But this guy, it's hard to really be aggressive. What I'm doing is probably the best you can do with the weapon toss that you will be. You can try to pressure people, and if you're a lot more risky, you can use that ABC mantle as a pressure tool. Just trying to get into people and force them to make a mistake, or force them to commit to a beam shot while you just eat it and try to get to them. A lot better on the X1 because you can melee, but with the X2 you can use it to win firefights just because you can make more mistakes than the enemy, which is good. But right here, I'm going to do the worst thing ever. It's it's the bane of all ABC Mantle players. You run into a Jirobi. Now, because Jirobis are multi-hitting uh, weapons and the beam weapons, they eat right through the ABC Mantle. It's just because it's constant hits. It sucks a lot. It's great when it happens, and it's great when you do it to someone, but it sucks when someone does it to you. It's, uh, there's not that much to say about it. It's just like, oh, god damn, I hate when that happens. But don't worry, the ABC mantle on this guy actually charges pretty quick, which is nice. And, you know, the mantle isn't this super high-tech galaxy brain thing you have to know. It's pretty simple. You just gotta be smart about it. You know, if you're gonna go in, go in, but just be careful with it, because the ABC mantle isn't invincibility. It just eats a few beam shots, and someone knowing that you, uh, the enemy has it can easily play around it, but it, it can help. It can save you. That's the big thing about this mantle. A lot of times, how I use it is, it saves me. It's like, oh, I would have died. Whoopee. Or like, oh, I got out of that sticky situation because of the mantle. Whoopee. It's just that stuff. Or a uh, thing I like is someone's comboing you and they end up combo with like a charge shot or powered up knockdown beam shot and it hits you, it eats through your mantle, it doesn't combo you and you can quickly recover and get into the enemy's base while they think, oh I'm gonna do the combo and with a charge shot and get to uh, his uh, teammate then you realize, oh wait, this guy has the mantle, he's not gonna get the hard knockdown, I have to deal with him now. It's just, that's the, probably the biggest thing about the mantle that I like a lot. But anyways, let's not, let's stop talking about this, like, cloth. It's really cool. I just like everything about Crossbow and Gundam. It's a really nice story. I just like it a lot, I don't know why. This has a soft spot for me. I really like the designs. It's on the border, I've probably said this before, it's on the border of being really stupid because it's pirates in mobile suits and it takes place in the universal century to so having like a jolly larger on your mobile suits kind of lame but they execute it in a really nice way where it's almost on the border of being lame but it's not lame some people might think it's lame i don't think it's lame i like these suits a lot i love them Wish we had current master grades of them, but you know, beggars can't be choosing. But let me stop banning about these suits. If there's a mobile suit I like, I'm gonna be talking about how much I like it. I'm just really passionate about the robots I like. I really like cool robots if you guys haven't found out the theme of this channel. But anyways, let's get to this game. Now we're both pretty even. I have a ton of health. Both of them have very low health. My teammate dies, which is my 3,000 cost, but the Haradu, I don't remember the pronunciation of that suit. I'm trying to get him because that's a 3,000. At this point, I should have got the Dark Hound because he also, actually no, he died already, so that plane goes out the window. I'm trying to get the Haradu just because if he dies, he's going to spawn back with very low health. And I should have fired a shot there, but oh well. I'm still trying to get this guy. The Dark Hound's pretty healthy, so we might focus him if the Harada goes too far away. But the Harada too, I don't know the guy's pronunciation, sorry. Has a lot of ranged tools, so firing at him, him being at a distance is still a threat. But we got him. Dark Hound has half. I have no, I don't, I have good amount of health. My teammate has very good health. But the 3000 cost mobile suit has low. So this is really close. I can just spend a lot of time running away. I tried to get this guy. I really thought I was going to get him there. 
So I'm in a bad situation. I put on the do-rag, but it looks like my teammate got him. You can be very distant with this mobile suit with the weapon toss, your main gun, and the mantle. You can run away, and you have two terms of running away. You can take off the mantle, get the speed boost, and just skedaddle over there. Or you can put on the mantle, run away, and try to just be a little more risky. Or just try to be as safe as possible, but no. If you accidentally or if you make a mistake, your mantle can cover you. And you can also do that on the offense. You can put on the mantle and just go in trying to get that last kill. It's up to you and your decision. You know, if it works, it's a good strategy. If it doesn't, it's a bad strategy. Which really boils down to pressure or like taking a risk in this game. Did it work? Yes. Then it was calculated, outplayed, outmaneuvered, 10 out of 10. Did it not work? No. I mean, did it work? No. Then that was a terrible thing you did. Why'd you do it? You should be ashamed. But oh well. Now I think this is our last game. We're getting the X1 and the Dark Hound. And I forget what my teammate is. It's the Red Frame. So we're against the 2500, 2000 cost uh, team. Well, theirs is 2000. I don't remember the Dark Hound's cost. I think it's 2000. But it's the 2000 with the 3000 cost. Their 3000 is about to die. Has very low health. Which is great because our 2500 died. Which we have the. But it's right here. He died, so we now have the cost advantage. My team has full health. Their 3000 has full health. I'm low. I'm just going to keep my distance. My red frame, I do have a few games with him. That guy's putting in work. He's just going in, which is great. It allows me to keep at a distance. I'm going to try to melee this guy like four times. And I'm going to miss every time. Finally get him. Everyone bursts. He bursts at the end. Now everyone's throwing everything. And you're going to see throughout this entire, for like a good solid 20 seconds, or maybe 15, Everyone was focusing that red frame because that guy was going in right now I have very low health. He has low health if we both die it's game over But next person that dies in their team it's game over so one of us can be the aggressor That's obviously gonna be him. I'm gonna keep my distance trying to get a shot Thankfully he gets some going high in the sky and we end that off nicely but anyways, guys, I hope you guys like this X2 gameplay. And you know, right now, I just really want to play MBON. But like usual, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a good one, stay safe, and see you guys next time.